The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. You want to be part of the program? And we encourage you to do such if you want to partake and ask questions. Two different avenues in which you can choose to do that. One is by sending us us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to talk to us directly, you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-7469, toll-free, coast-to-coast. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stockpot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, a skillet and stockpot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two, it's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. Proclamationgoods.com. We thank you, thank them for being part of the program today. So, Holly, let's get into the program. Uh, when you go, if you're a member on a gardening social media Facebook page, we'll just preference that, a group, uh, there's a lot of repetitive questions being asked and a lot of the same uh, familiar images being shown about what is wrong with this and why is this happening and how do I fix this? So we're going to go over five of the most frequently asked questions that we've seen in, on our particular pages and we are going to address them. If these five do not fall into the five that you have asked the most this year, please correct us by sending us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com and we will get your question answered for you. So uh, we'll start with this, Holly. What is wrong with my tomatoes? And the image is a bright, colorful tomato with a rotten black dis- uh, disproportionate bottom on it. So this is blossom end rot, and blossom end rot is a physiological problem. It's not a disease. It's not a pest. It's not. Um, it's not anything that is causing it from. I don't know. It's not a disease. So it's a physiological problem. So what happens is that you have a lack of access of calcium to your plants and therefore it causes that issue, blossom and rot. Um, so a lot of times people will, there's like an old wife's tale or old gardener's tale saying you need to add Epsom salt to your soil or crushed eggshells or powdered milk. And maybe powdered milk might help. I'm not really sure. But you want Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. It's not calcium. And a lot of times people will add, you know, they'll put Epsom salt in a spray bottle with some water or they'll just sprinkle it around and water the plants. And this takes care of the problem. That's not going to take care of the current fruit, but it takes care of the problem on the next fruiting. And you think, oh, voila, that's that's what worked. Well, no. Well, well, I mean, people will also, there are products that are available that are blossom in rot spray or rot stop this and that people believe if they sprayed on the plant, it will actually stop the process that is causing the blackening rot appearance on their fruit. Right. And that's, yeah, that's not also, that's also not a thing. So what happens is that when you water it, you release that calcium into the plant and so when the calcium is locked up in the soil because maybe you forgot to water, you have no rain, what have you, then the plant can't access it. But when you water, then the calcium gets released and it takes care of the problem. Now, 99% of the problems in this situation is the lack of moisture being in the soil. There are occasions where you will get blossom in rot because there is too much moisture and it's flushing away the available necessities or the, in this instance, calcium that the plant needs. But for the majority of all of you who are listening, you're not watering enough. It's not got enough moisture. You vary on very rare occasions that you don't have the calcium needed in the soil. But most of the time, it is because you are not watering frequently enough, keeping that soil damp to allow that plant to take up the nutrients that it needs in order to produce the fruit correctly. Right. And that is that is vital. So that is the problem. That is what blossom and rot. And, and-, and there is no variety. I, I've seen this question. Well, what variety of tomatoes is best 
that it will have less blossom in rot. It really, it really comes down to the water, and there's no such thing no. Uh, in in the world of tomatoes. All right. Uh, next question: When to harvest my potatoes? Well, this depends on what it can depend on a few different things. What variety you grow? If you if you know what variety and how long they will take to grow, you can time it out. Um, you also will see the the plant the plant that comes out of the ground, the top part of the potato start to die back, and then you usually know. That's the two major ways to tell. Mm, you can start harvesting 10 weeks after you plant your t- your potato. You're going to have, what is it, baby, t- baby potatoes, new potatoes. I forget what the actual terminology is. But you can start getting potatoes at that point. Your best, uh, to, your best opportunity to have the largest potatoes possible is whenever that plant has died back. And you talked about there's several different uh, growth time frames based on the, t- the variety. There's early, mid, and late potato varieties, uh, 70 to 90 days, 90 to 110 days, and there's potatoes that can take up to 110 to 135 days. So you can plant potatoes that you get from your local co-op or organic grocery store that is sprouting. You still want to do your best to identify what type of potatoes those are so you can determine whether or not there is a persistent problem in with those potatoes. Uh, if something is going on, you know, eight, nine weeks in, they're starting to die off. Well, this doesn't seem right. Something's wrong. Uh, side note on the potatoes, people are showing pictures of little green tomato-like fruit coming off of the potatoes. What is that? That's a potato seed pod. So if you don't start potatoes from um, tubers, tubers, which is you, which is recommended, right? Which is recommended. You could start from the seed pods. I think it's a it's a couple year process. Right. But those are tomato, potato seed pods, and you don't want to eat them. They they are not edible. They are a defense mechanism for the plant that animals will consume them and and get sick or have they have a bad taste, I, I, one or the other, and that will prevent the plant from being eaten. But you'll see this. You can save the seeds. You can play around. There are groups and, and organizations that focus on growing potatoes from the true seed. Uh, but it's much, much easier just to do the tubers as we've always been taught to do. All right. Next one is um, deer and rabbit groundhog problems in my yard. Yeah. So there, these are common problems. And one thing you can use is deer defeat. And you can go to um, DeerDefeat.com. You use code RADIO to save 10% off your order. It's a sworn by product. It's all natural. Many of you who are listening, if you're not listening, you wouldn't know this. Many of the listeners of our program have purchased the product and uh, swear by it. Works very well. Does exactly what it's supposed to. Do. It doesn't prevent the animals from coming into your yard. It prevents the animals from consuming the plants. You can spray it right on your, the, right on the plants. You got to follow the recommend the the instructions based on the type of uh, plant and uh, the growth uh, cycle of that plant. Uh, no odor after thirty minutes to, for humans, and then after th- it will still stay active. Rain, sleet, snow, thirty days um, afterwards, and you reapply. But it works phenomenal. You want to go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, and you can click on the search tab and type in "deer defeat" uh, two words, and you can see and t- uh, we've talked to the owner at uh, an expo and uh, how the process is done. So uh, there are other means if you choose not to. We're not going to be, you know, I don't want this to be an info commercial. There are other ways in which to detour rabbits, deer, um, and groundhog. Uh, the groundhog one, I'll start with that, and you can go with the deer, Holly. Uh, you can put, if you're doing a raised bed, you can do thick hardware cloth, um, a wire mesh to keep them from chewing up under the bed. That's uh, one way. Other ways, if you don't have raised beds, you can trap them and relocate them. You can dispose of them in other means, legal or non, in your community or your property. Uh, deer, Holly, how do you alternately keep them away from your property? Sure. So deer, you can... Make sure that you are not planting any vegetables that are near the candy, can, like deer candy. So if it's tomatoes, green beans, not near the perimeter of your property or garden. Um, there's also different um, fencing you can use. You can do a double fence that stops the deer. They they won't jump in because then they can't jump out. Um, yeah, you can do a, a fish line around some tall posts. 
and then you put that fish line around the deer bump their noses on it they don't know what it is they run away they don't come back uh the the uh, practice of putting human hair or urine around the garden not that effective because deers are smelling that all the time in an urban setting rural areas that might be a little more uh, productive because urban uh, country deer are more uh, skittish around humans urban deer or metropolis deer are around people all the time and they they are not as skittish because they know they're probably not going to get shot at type of thing right and rabbits you can uh, for years we had a two foot high poultry or chicken fence around our garden and that did very well detouring the rabbits and making sure that we sealed off all the perimeters going into the property that they couldn't go under the fence and, and sealed that up and that worked very well uh, to detour them as well Right, and um, now they we we found some rabbits. Um, they had a little den, and now some of them are have attacked some things in our garden. And we put the fence back and up. We put the fence back up. So, um, yeah. So yeah. sometimes that's the answer. Well, uh, the answer also can be Walton's Incorporated, Holly. Uh, knowing where your meat comes from, knowing what you put in your food, Walton's has all of that and a whole lot more. Yeah, Waltons.com. You can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other any other meat product your way. They also have MeatGistics.com to help educate people on the hows and whys of meat processing, as well of a community of almost fifteen thousand users who will help give their opinion and guidance on meat processing issues. And then, if you want to make some delicious snack sticks, they have. Or jerky, whatever. They have meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible Waltons. Everything but the meat. You can use code GROW22 to save 10% off your orders of $50 or more. And, or, I'm sorry, GROW50. GROW50. To save 10% off your orders of $50 or more and get free shipping. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.